Act 1, Scene 1. The show opens with two characters standing either side of the stage, holding a piece of red string and staring at each other. Sheets of yellow paper hang from the string like leaves. Shane pulls on one and begins to read. He pauses. Parenthesis. Smoothing out the wrinkles. Close parenthesis. Shane stands, he sighs, and says, Sometimes creating feels like you're swimming through toffee. Like you're in a dream and you want to come up for air, but you can't. Because if you do, you'll lose whatever it is that's making you make. And other times, it feels like banging your head against a wall repeatedly Repeatedly, repeatedly. That might sound melodramatic, <coughs> and it is. Shane pauses to consider his words, then realizes he's coming to the end of the sheet. He looks at the wire and takes a second page. He turns to the middle of the room and reads, Melodramatic. Now, there's a word misused. It's French, originally. Greek before that, obviously, but French, originally. It means a melody drama. It's used to denote a romantic musical of sorts. I suppose today we call it a rom-com, but operatic in its nature. Think wicked, but in French. It doesn't sound so bad, does it? So why do we use it as a negative? Oh, stop being so melodramatic. No use crying over spilled verse. We don't even need the song and dance, so stop being so dramatic. Stop it. Calm down. Think rationally. Be logical. Vulcanize. Never mind that the Vulcans are a work of fiction, and humanity without the drama is called robotics. But there's a word. Robot. It's Czech. Did you know that? Karel Čapek coined it first in 1920 from the Czech word robotnik. We would use serf or slave, maybe forced labor, indentured servitude, minimum wage. That's the idea. Robots being humanoid slaves who usually realize their plight and rise up against their overlords. It's a bit melodramatic one might say, especially if it's in song. Sometimes creating feels like hanging your head against the wall repeatedly, repeatedly. Sometimes creating feels like banging your head against the wall repeatedly, repeatedly. Sometimes creating feels like banging your head against the wall repeatedly, repeatedly. Shane reads from the page, realizes his thoughts are predetermined, considers his ability to break away from conformity yeah, he judges the enormity of the task and decides he's better off just reading the script. Yes, sometimes it feels like banging your head against a wall. Repeatedly. You get fixated on words, their history, their meaning, their specificity. Do you mean to say that I am acting musically, or do you mean to say that I am making mountains out of molehills? You can't possibly be making either. There aren't very many mountains in Ireland, and if you have any moles, the best you could do is make a hill out of the hedgerow. You know what I mean. In fact, I don't. That's your job. That's your job. To create meaning. Sometimes creating is like banging your head against a wall repeatedly, but you cannot break through without a few bangs. Shane moves on to a metaphor about his, about his father. You know, I, I don't want to do that bit. <laughs> that bit hurts. Shane moves on to a metaphor about his father. No, I, I don't want to. My dad's a builder, a fixer upper. Strong, manly. Arms like they could lift you when you were five and thought you were flying. Built like a brick. Shit house and heat. This is 
not a poem. This is not a poem. This is not a poem. This is not a poem. This is not a poem. This isn't a poem. This is not a poem. Heavy. Push my chest down and against my will weigh me up. Find out the things you wish you hadn't known. That heaviness on your chest is nothing but the foot of another giant, pressing as he's trying to resist all seeing gravity. I want to be him, because if you open up my ribcage and remove all the pointless, the lungs, the muscles, the heart, and even take a rib as a memory, these are what gives my way. So all things considered, push my chest down with your foot, use my arms to help the force, and wake me up. Let's find what makes me happy. Let's, let's find what makes me heavy. Shiver down your spine, and I was kind of unsure about talking about it. But 
I said, I will, because it's not a nice story, but it's also very re relevant, relevant. Because when we hear about stuff like Standing Rock in America, when we hear about all the pollution that's happening around our world on an environmental scale, but also the pollution within ourselves, like how difficult is it for us to just be ourselves, to express ourselves fully, to do the simple things that bring us joy? Like, it is so bloody hard. Because of this pollution that is sent on us by outside forces, but also within ourselves, these weird, dark voices that come from God knows where, and they spring on us every so often, I don't even know where they come from, but they haunt us ever so slightly in the background, but they keep us depressed. So the story about La, La Llorona and this flowing river that gets polluted, how do we bring it back? We bring it back by nurturing ourselves, being, a, being our own people who support us, being our own people who help us to be that wild self that allows the river to flow, flow freely and unpolluted. It's about being kind to ourselves by simply taking time out and doing the one thing that brings you a little bit of joy. It's about being wild and it's about going to that place that's almost childlike and stupid. And as Clarissa Pinkola Esther says, to do, to be creative, to do the things you love, you'll have to be the one who sits on a throne on top of a mule and spews out gold. It's totally crazy, it's totally off the wall. But it's okay to do that. And I just wanted to tell that little story because I have to remind myself, because I know how hard it is <coughs> to be yourself, to be creative, to be crazy, to not be crazy, but just to get on in this world. Shadow. Just keep swimming, just keep swimming, just keep swimming, just keep swimming, and keep on going, moving on, getting to, sucking up, breathing out, stopping, pulling, forcing our way. Let's not forget our shadows, those souls who claw our ankles and climb up each wall, holding hands, holding spaces, and pushing themselves away from the sun. It's selfish to think they hide from the light. They saved for us. The last long umbra seeding his way into our path, casting out the net, catching the star on the gun. How much of the way, you ask me? As much as you want. Shadows don't live in themselves. They push through because they need to. Make it day by day and take your city from carrying on our hair. And then when do they go in the light of life? That would be simple under our feet, soulless, proud, and burgeoning. Filter. Free yourself from it. Hold it to yourself. Stitch it on your skin. Sew it to your soul. It is part of you. You are some of it and most of it. You break it out in times of success. You turn to it in forgiveness. It understands your selfishness. It offers you nothing. It has taken all your tears, you won't buy for it. It will speak up for you, you will lose your voice. It will dance for you, you will be left going in the last call. It will buy you a drink, you will die of thirst. It will guide you, you will lose yourself. It will weigh you down, you will lift it up. It will cut you, you will stitch it up. It will curl to you, you will keep it straight. You will guide it. Move it through this world like stones filtering out. Hold yourself to higher standards as it guides your hand. If it had hands, it would do it itself. It's right now. Lift your throat up. Rise your hands above everything and let it fall.
mess. <laughs> All these pages. It's probably a whole tree worth of paper down here. It's definitely a solid branch. I know. You know we only use tree-based paper because of the Chinese. They invented all sorts of stuff before we came along and robbed it off them. Indochina is typically where most of everything happened. Historically, Europe is more of a, an anomaly than anything else. We had our own versions of the technology they had. Mules, where they had wheelbarrows, saltpeter for fireworks, papyrus and parchment where they had paper. And the poor trees. But imagine how much hide it would take to waffle on this long. Veal is the same root word as vellum. When you make parchment, itself a word which essentially means leather, you have to use good skin. The younger the animal, the better the skin. Because it hasn't been through so much use. Life roughens. And if you want to record it, you need something soft. Vellum is a type of parchment made from very young animals. There is a particular type of calf skin called uterine, which was made from animals so young they were not yet born. On this skin, one would write magics, spells, curses. You see, not all who write are eloquent, nor all who create equal. My dad's a builder. Fixer upper more than anything else, straw, manly, etc., etc. And when you're that young, dads are like Superman, aren't they? A mysterious, good, all powerful, and for you. Superman is, it's all a mask. 